and off to a great start as always there was this weird shadow you think I'd have this down, like the lights and the whole, whatever. <laughs> There's a weird shadow going on. Uh, <laughs> okay, anywho. Happy holidays. There's the Yay, happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> that was a classic moment right there. Trying to fix my view, and I put my hand over the camera. <laughs> Okay, today we're going to be, <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> I'm excited because my child, my grownness, my six, three, four, my six foot three baby is, um, he just arrived, he just landed, so we, his best friend is picking him up, giving him his space, he's an, a young adult, and he's very excited to be in California to see his best buddy, so they're out having dinner, and then he comes home, so it should work out perfectly, so. Can you hear me okay? Because I feel like I'm shouting. Am I shouting? Everything feels a little wry. So I can see if there's people here, but you have to say hello if you want me to know that you're here. You don't have to. You could be like lurking, stalking us, <laughs> afraid. If we're Facebook friends, <laughs> yay for me, exactly. If we're friends, then, then you can't hide. Your name comes up. But, <laughs> okay. So today, let me just dive in. Happy holidays. We're going to talk about um, screenplay talk topics. I'm using two screens. It's so fancy. Except for this one. Pardon me a moment. If you hear a crash, don't be alarmed. Hi, Robert. Nice to see you. Or you know what I mean. <laughs> nice to see your name, I should say. Um, we are launching our podcast. Uh, should I say the date, Doug? We actually have a date, finally. Um, so some of these, uh, if these Facebook Lives go well, we will be putting them on the podcast because we feel like it's another way that we can share information about, you know, all the things that we talk about. Remember to scroll. Oh, wait. It's <laughs> okay. So this is how it works. Oh, well, hello. <laughs> hello, Kathleen. Oh, goodness. And now I'm, my screen just blew up. Marion, nice to see you guys. Sorry. I need to scroll. There's that. So I have my monitor over on this side but with two monitors my mouse has to go off of there and then <laughs> some someone I talked about this last week somebody put why does she always say squirrel because <laughs> she needs help and then some, someone else someone else posted and I, I don't know if you guys have seen this thread where somebody's saying I know she's a, you know she kind of drives me nuts she's a little bit all over the place or just joined it or something and I've almost posted and I haven't yet I haven't had a chance yet to say yeah we should just focus or like tap 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 I'm right here <laughs> I can read everything that's in this group just to, <laughs> totally great and, and it's great feedback and it is true I I personally that's why we have Doug because <laughs> he's like <laughs> settle and then but I think um yes please <laughs> I don't know what you're referring to. I'm sorry. And then, um, uh, <laughs> poor Cindy, I'm always saying that to you, huh? What? <laughs> um, and then, but, but I think that the information that we give when, when in the handouts and whatnot is pretty laid out. <laughs> that's what, that's what's in here. I just can't, that's just my personality. <laughs> and it's like, and if it bothers you, then <laughs> move along, son. Cause I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm not exactly 20, so you can't change your spots. I, I'm always a work in progress, always trying to improve. And I really do. I'm trying. I'm really trying. It might not seem like it to hone things in. And there's times when it gets, <laughs> and I love it because sometimes like the snow one is the perfect example. I was like dying about the snow. And then someone was like, about a screenplay. I'm like, thank you. That's right. That's why we're here. So we, um, we get a lot of people asking, you know, how do we write how do I write? How do I come up with an idea to write? <laughs> Help task master. Hi, Matthew. Nice to see you. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Peggy, you're a woman after my own heart. Thank you. It's more purple today. So awesome. Um, thanks, Amber. You guys are so kind. <laughs> you're so, so kind. And and you guys cracked me. And Peggy, it's your fault because when I was dying about the snow, I finally pulled it together and I looked up and you had a laughing face. <laughs> and then I lost it all over again. I would blame you. It's not your fault. <laughs> but anyway, 
to, we get a lot of people saying like, you know, well, actually, it's, this has been such an amazing journey as we figure this whole thing out because when we first started, one, this is like blows my mind now, but we were like, I don't know if we have enough content. <laughs> That's not been a problem. Like one of the things, and, and this is anything, if, if you've been doing it for a really long time and then someone comes in and asks questions, it's like, oh, right. Like, I, like there's been many times where it's been like, oh, shoot, I need to go back and like explain what that is. Like I just kind of am starting from a different place. So um, <laughs> your timing is impeccable. This is true. We know this about you. Why is my chair so low? <laughs> I'm like a little kid. Um, <laughs> so, so like one of the questions that, well, so we've just recently started the screenwriter mastermind, right? And so we realized as we were doing this, a lot of people were asking, how do I write a screenplay? And then it was like, oh, yeah, I guess we could help with that. And then within that, people were like, we said, so did you guys have ideas? And a lot of people were like, oh, no, like didn't know what to write, write about. Um, I think so too. Yay, happy is contagious, right? I think so too. That's why the baby videos, the babies laughing, oh my God, slays me, slays me. So it's, yeah. So, so you, you guys are like, so here's a little story. So last night I was driving through for someone else, picking up tacos from, we call them Mr. Meat Tacos at Jack in the Box. I don't really eat a Jack in the Box, but Mr. Meat Tacos. And so I said, sure, I'll, I'll pick you up some. And then, so they had texted me their order and I was at Jack in the Box. I actually said over the intercom, I'd like two Mr. Meat Tacos. And then this was me. I was like, oh, wait, wait. That's what I meant. Just two tacos, please. <laughs> and then so I texted and said what I'd done. And they were like, no, 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 they're going to spit in my tacos. <laughs> Don't laugh. Anyway. <laughs> they are mystery meat. What is that? <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, mystery meat tacos are what you had in college. <laughs> you know, a jack in the box. Although some people, I guess, still have them. <laughs> um, anyway. So one of the th things that people start, you know, they didn't know what they were going to write about. And we were like, oh, that's a thing. Like, <laughs> I don't have that problem. I have the opposite problem. I'm like, oh, that's a cool topic. You know, I'm like, squirrel. Okay, I'm going to try to stop doing the squirrel thing quite so much. Um, but, you know, I, both Doug and I keep, you know, lists of topics and whatever. And we've had a few recently <laughs> where we're like, oh, man, that's just too good. And I'm not going to go into this story too much, but... I had this amazing experience. I, I, I serve on nonprofit boards to help people with whatever marketing, whatever they need. And we, we had a meeting the other night with a bunch of ladies that are, you know, I, feel, I love it because I feel young in this particular organization. And one of them just had this meltdown. And it was like, I mean, I was actually kind of worried about her, but um, <laughs> thanks. It's in the, so it's the squirrel meat tacos. <laughs> You know, we have a producer that has a really great roadkill story. I'm kind of tangenty today. I'm sorry today. Um, she had a total meltdown and was screaming at all the other ladies, like, are you fundraising? Like, she just completely lost it. And and it was, I was texting them like, oh, wait, you can't write this. And because she's a friend and I felt for her, and it was actually kind of a tough moment because she completely, Completely lost her cookies about fundraising so it was so we kind of went on a whole tangent so we do not have a shortage of ideas so what we thought you'd, we'd do is take you through and there's a handout we thought we'd take you through kind of some of the ways to come up with ideas and we'd love to hear yours you know and you know sharing is caring like I wouldn't worry you know about sharing your ideas even if you shared an idea and someone's like that's a great idea I will write that it would be two completely different screenplays. And I've actually done like writing things where you get a topic, right? And everybody writes about it. And it's hilarious. Like very rarely do you get anything that's even similar, right? <laughs> squirrel meat tacos. Step right up for your squirrel meat tacos. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I'm excited because my boy is here. My boy. He eats Mr. Meat Tacos. Well, no, he doesn't anymore because he has a healthy girlfriend. <laughs> Women unite. Anyway, um, so what we thought you'd do is kind of take you through some some ways that you can kind of come up with topics for your screenplay in case you're having trouble with ideas and kind of also some habits and things where you can find inspiration. And so I don't think I have actually, I don't. Um, 
so we talk a lot. Well, we talk a lot about in mindset, but we talk a lot about putting on your opportunity ears. So you put on your ears listening for, and we talk about it in terms of work, in terms of networking and understanding where there might be work and listening to people's, you know, when you're working with producers, listening, really li always listening to the problems you can solve, the things that you can do, always listening in your life to opportunities that are around you that you might not have, you know, they're everywhere. And once, once you tap into that ability, brace yourself because it is like, like opportunity is everywhere. And, and like, and we watch Shark Tank, like you watch the things that people are coming up with. And it's just like, it's, once you kind of cross over into, you know, away from, oh, there's nothing out there, which is where a lot of people live. <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> that's, that's how they sound. And that's how they look. I don't know. So once you kind of break that away, then ideas come, opportunities come, ideas for screenplays, ideas for work. I did, you know, it's just all like comes raining in once you take off that rat, rat stuff and just open yourself up. So that has a big part of it. Um, it may be pigeon meat, right? Oh, my, <laughs> I have a friend that calls pigeons rats with wings. <laughs> Gross, says Cindy. <laughs> Rose. <laughs> okay, it totally sounds like a cartoon. I'm a little bit congested. Okay. <laughs> get smart. Okay. So we're going to take you through some steps where you can find ideas for both your screenplays and in life. So it doesn't, you don't, and one of the things, and we, this is the handout, the handout that we're giving today. I keep getting glimpses of myself and I'm tired. But I don't have people saying to me anymore, you look tired. I went through a phase in my life where like every day someone was like, the person behind the counter somewhere would be like, wow, you look tired. I was like, okay, my goal today is to get through the whole day without somebody telling me I look tired. So anyway, um, I don't get that as much anymore just because I just crack myself up and that's all it takes. My friend was like, start dancing. You look tired. <laughs> Am I look tired when I do this? Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. <sighs> okay. So here we're gonna so we're gonna do this handout is basically write what you know. That is the kind of the meat, <laughs> the pigeon meat of what <laughs> we have a theme today. The mystery meat of what we're talking about here is like um, hi Kevin. <laughs> it's nice to see you. <laughs> um I don't see you, you know what I mean, um, is to write what you know. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to write your daily life. And it doesn't mean that you can't write about, you know, living on Mars. You can set your story on Mars and still write what you know. It's about pulling from the experiences that you have, exploring from the experiences that you have to create something, even if the framework of it isn't something where you live. Um, you will get an email with the handouts. Absolutely. And we, so we'll put the link in here kind of toward, towards the end. We give them towards the end so that you're not like, <laughs> so that you're, you know, we can have a little bit of an exchange. Um, <laughs> so, um, um, so we'll give you the handout at the end. So don't worry. And then every week, every Monday, if you're not on our mailing list, you just go to the top of the page. Here's the story. You go to the top of the page and you totally dated myself with that reference. And then you put in your email address. Um, <laughs> and also, um, we have the planner. So last week we talked about planning 2019 and this week we have a planner. So there's a link up, up above or now I think it's, <laughs> it's a little Brady bunching. Um, that's a, did you know that's a verb Brady bunching? Um, <laughs> um, so that you can get on the mailing list focus and and then every monday or sometimes tuesday but usually monday we send out an email that gives you the handout from the week before and tells you what we're going to talk about this week we're trying to get some consistency <laughs> what a concept right um so and we'll it will also be post posted in the replay yay thanks i love the purple hair too it's fun it's fun because then it's like you don't really have to do anything and you've done something <laughs> it's great plus my the girl that does my hair i should have her on as a guest it's like a mastermind because she has her own business. And so we sit there and go, have you, have you read this book? Have you talked about this? At <laughs> She's just like me in terms of like a little bit nuts about, I, I'm a ver ferocious, voracious. I read a lot. 
<laughs> That's why I have such a great vocabulary because <laughs> of the amount I read. But no, I read and listen to a lot constantly. And I'm in four courses right now. I think I take courses. I'm very much about learning because I want to funnel it into this really and give you as much info as I can. So, um, so you can pull from what you know. So get on the mailing list so you can get the handout. And then so we're going to go back to the handout, which is write what you know. And so you can pull from what you know. And so we've got a, a, a list of questions, and they'll be in the handout. But some of the things that you can kind of pull from are, you know, what, what do you do for a living or what have you done for a living? What are all the jobs that you have? And <laughs> sometimes, like, I was with a friend, a friend and I've, like, I've known her for a long time, but we're getting to know each other more lately. And and uh, she kept saying, well, back when I worked as, <laughs> there would be like this random job, like back when I worked as a pelt cleaner. <laughs> I'm not joking. And then it would be back as when I worked as a nurse's aide, back when I worked as, and I was like, oh my gosh, how many odd jobs have you done? But all of, like, that's a story right there, right? So that's opportunity years. So like her story of just all these random jobs that she's done <laughs> is a story. So um how do I get it all done? You mean all the stuff? <laughs> you just one day, one step at a time. That's how you get everything done. Um, so you can look at the jobs that you've had. You can take experiences from those jobs. You know, I tell a lot of weird, random stories. Like, what are those? You have those stories too. We all have those wacky stories in our life. Life is wacky and full of adventure. And so, you know, you can take those and pull them into. And I think that's the thing that we relate to most is when someone has a story like that and they put it within, even if it's in the Hobbit or if it's in, you know, just because it's in the Hobbit world, it's a very human, you know, stories about humanity and stories about relationships and it all doesn't really matter. Um, and so looking kind of, you know, what are your hobbies? What is your job? Uh, where did you grow up? Like, what are some of the things in the places that you grew up? Every every place that people grow up, they all have their, it all has its own personality, right? It all has its own, like, those kinds of things are the things that people will respond to and relate to. So, or, or not, or have a total fish out of water thing. Like, they'll, you know, I think that, like, Fargo, that's a great example. That is a total murder mystery, right? And it's so many people, I mean, we have relatives um, that are in North Dakota. And so for them and in Fargo. And so they were just, of course, over the moon over this movie. And they kept saying how funny it was. And it's so hilarious. And the opening scene is not funny. It's scary. And so I was like, this isn't funny. Like, right. And I love the Coen brothers and I get their humor, but that opening scene's not funny at all. It's horrifying. And so I was like, it's not, it didn't even have like the, I was expecting raising Arizona. Like when I got there because they'd all, it wasn't until later and like now, like, or the second time that that movie gets really funny, especially for the people that are from that area. I mean, they are clearly from that area. They pull on that, that, you know, region a lot. And so pulling from the region where you're growing up, like we should write a story about the Lakeside Hotel. <laughs> That's a total inside joke, sorry. Um, so there's just so many like, you know, things that you could do. You have over 250 stories, dreams, we'll, we'll get to dreams in a moment. You have over 250 stories that came from dreams. Could use help with getting them published and a screenplay. <laughs> oh, is that all? <laughs> getting them all, 250 stories published and into a screenplay. So <clears throat> I actually worked with a director at Columbia, and he was trying to decide about what to write about. So he had me come up with a, I, it was like a big list like that of different ideas, just different log lines, basically, of ideas that he could pull from because he was having some writer's block. He didn't use any of them, but they were great for me. But what they did was they, they sparked him and then he did come up with something. Um, he is a brilliant writer, actually. So, so that'll be, so Matthew, stick with us because as we move forward, I mean, that'll be the things that we talk about in terms of, you know, today we are talking about writing what you know, where do you pull from your ideas in future episodes, whatever you want to call this, we'll be talking about how do you form formulate that. So, and we really, um, keeping a dream journal is huge. Keeping a journal by your bed and being able to like w the minute you wake up, write those things down because you probably won't remember them once you wake up for real. <laughs> I dreamed. Okay. So you dream um, analyzers out there. I dreamed. <laughs> I dreamed that I was carrying eggs, raw eggs. They were in a carton, but the carton was flat. Like it was supposed to be a carton, but it was actually flat. And then like, they fell and I broke them all. I was like, what does that mean? Like they all broke it. But I wasn't upset about it. I was like, kind of like how I usually am because that would not be an unusual thing for me to do. So, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> I think I did look it up and didn't have actually 
breaking eggs, but you just have eggs. Um, but yeah, like keeping that. <laughs> Wait, it could be more, it, right? So Matthew, you're doing a great example of like, once you have one, right? It's just like, it's the greatest thing ever. And so then you start to kind of hone down into what are the, what are the things that resonate the most with you? What is the one that kind of keeps coming up? And you can even start doing a few outlines. You could start creating a few characters. And sometimes what will happen is you can start creating something and then you, you can get a certain, even a ways in where you realize, you know what, this character is just not fitting in here. And you could take that character and you can move them over to one of the other ideas. You can start shuffling characters around. Um, that would kind of be the next step. But, you know, we're talking about, it is like all it takes is one good one, you know. <laughs> it's kind of like business. All it takes is one good business idea. Um, so um, I, <laughs> there's sometimes when I'm in, there was one, now I can't remember, but I was like, <laughs> I got to tell you about the dream I had. I was like, did you write it down? I was like, no, 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 I'll remember this one. Um, um, yeah, so... And so Cindy's saying, I wouldn't even have time to write it down. I usually forget within like the first five minutes. It's true. So when you first wake up, it is taking that moment to like, just take a breath and relax and, and try to think of what they are. Because if you do that, usually they'll stick a little bit longer and you have time to write them down. So it is like, and you should be taking those moments in the mornings anyway, just as a writer and an artist to, to kind of connect and write something, anything when you kind of first wake up, that's a good time to tap into that for sure. Um, so when you think about where you grew up, like what were you, who were the friends or who were the characters in your high school or who were the characters in your town that people talked about, or, you know, what are some of the things that happened as you were growing up that you could write about? Who are some of the, you know, what are some of the experiences that you think about and laugh? Um, what were, what was interesting? What circumstances were funny? One of the best, and we actually don't have this on the list, but one of the best, I don't, oh, we have it later. Never mind. So we'll talk about it later. <laughs> that was that for a living or one of the really good ones. Never mind. Um, so, um, in, and what kind of relationships were fascinating, you know, even if they were heartbreaking, like what are some of the triumphs? What are some of the tragedies? What are some of the traumas that you, that you went through? Um, you know, and there's times like, I think about some of the times actually in high school that I had that were some of the greatest moments ever. So because there was a, the purity to them because there's something, and that's why I think coming of age stories people can relate to is because there's this purity about that time period of when you're just discovering kind of adult life and figuring out relationships and figuring out goals and, you know, dreams and trying to, you know, what are the steps I want to take to get somewhere and that kind of thing. There's this possibility that sort of permeates everything that's so sweet you know and that's one of the reasons why i think peggy sue got married is such a sweet movie is because she's so she's in a place where she doesn't feel that and she's you know goes back to this time and you see this they're all so full of possibility these kids you know and so there's just something so sweet about that and and it's great that they they juxta juxtapose it <laughs> in juxtaposition they put the grandparents in who have lived these long lives and yet the very last thing that she asks her grandparents my favorite line in the whole movie where she says um if you could change one thing what would it be and he says i would have taken better care of my teeth <laughs> and it's so beautiful because he's come to you know being a grandparent and he's he's happy with the choices that he made and he doesn't live and even if you have regrets he's not living in those regrets he's living in the place where he feels good about the choices that he's made. So it's just a, such a sweet movie in that regard. So, you know, kind of thinking back, um, Matthew says, I type all of my dreams down. You type all of your dreams down? Oh, because like in your phone or something. I have nightmare sessions that I've written down, a nightmare about every 20 to 30 minutes. Goodness. Usually I have a tape recorder on my phone and my laptop. My goodness. <laughs> That's some serious writing down of dreams. So I think part of, and I'm psychoanalyzing here, but one of, the, one of the things that ends up happening when we do this is that then you're anticipating it. And so I think it happens more. I remember I used to have nightmares really bad. And I thought I'm going to read Stephen King before I go to get bed because maybe that will help. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. It didn't help. It made it way worse. <laughs> Shocker. Right. Um, yeah, that's, that's fascinating, Matthew. I, that is a story to me, like that whole thing, because most people write down their dreams, but that you have all of these apparatus that you can make sure and capture it, and that you're having these nightmares like every 20 to 30 minutes, like they might be connecting so green, so I don't forget, wait, 
So I don't forget, but a lot of them I do. So maybe I should write the ones down. Yeah, write the ones down. Absolutely, that you that you do remember. Um, and don't worry if it doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> we totally know your genre now, Matthew. Absolutely, blah. I write all genres though, not just horror, but my favorite is dark humor. So if you if you already kind of live in a space where your daily thoughts and your daily ideas are in that kind of genre, then it doesn't make it you know stands to reason that your your subconscious is going to be in that space right there with you, <laughs> even more so, right? And you know, most of you know that I have also have produced a haunted house for many years and. Even in doing that, it's interesting. I, I didn't, even while we're doing pretty, our haunted house though wasn't gory or that kind of thing. So, um, so you've been in this for a while then, Matthew, if you read Poltergeist when you were 10, that would make sense. But in, and I grew up on the carnivals with my family doing spook shows and spook houses and stuff. And so, but the thing is, is doing that and being behind the scenes and actually producing that, I think in some ways made me not have those dreams because I was behind the scenes and it was so not real that I, I don't typically have, you know, my nightmare dreams are more about people I love or that kind of thing. They're not like, I don't have fantastical dreams. I don't fly in my dreams. I'm just not. And I think it's partly because I'm so creative in my, when, in my waking hours. Um, it depends on what you read, but yeah, I think you, you can get a lot worse if you read Stephen King before you go to bed. I love Stephen King too, but personally I love Stephen King. I don't know. I had a, I was 19 at the time. I had a, there was a madness to my mind that I can't remember why. I think what I thought it would kind of get it out. Like I would, you know, it wouldn't be my own thing with some, some someone else's stories maybe. Um, yeah. Grem, well, gremlins and other stories. So it is, and you have a sense of humor about it. There's a lot of LOLs going on. So that's good. And your profile picture is definitely, you have a sense of humor about all. You need to hook up with uh, Mickey, who's also in this group. He's also a screen reader and, and this is his genre as well. You guys could go to town on it. Um, but I think having a sense of humor about it definitely helps. And, and, but writing those dreams down, but then do you, do you actually create stories out of them? Um, and also, you know, purging them out. And then if the, it doesn't sound to me, I mean, it sounds like you're making good artistic use out of them and they're not really bothering you all that much. It doesn't sound like you're doing it out of a psychoanalyst thing of trying to get away from them. Like you're actually using them in the creative way, which is awesome. Um, and I think a lot of people write, you know, they write what they know and they write stories about tragedies that they've lived through, you know, and things that have happened to them. And I think sometimes that can be very cathartic and you can write about things that, were hurtful or things that, you know, were hard and you can have stories of triumph because of that. Um, so definitely it's a way to explore, you know, things that have happened to you or happen have happened to other people that maybe that, you know, or even that have happened, you know, in our society or in our culture or, you know, history or that kind of thing. You can pull stories. Um, there's a film out right now that the name is escaping me. I don't think I ever knew the name. It's shoot where he took a couple of books and then he wrote, author story and because he was such a fan of the books which I thought was really interesting kind of like adaptation where he's hired to write the adaptation of the book but instead he writes the journey of writing the adaptation so brilliant um so you can also go down you know sports what sports do you like to play I actually really love sports stories because sports stories are such a reflection of humanity and such a reflection of the triumph of the spirit typically a sports story is really about that more than it is about the sport um so you've read um, The Hobbit like seven times. You create at least a chapter on each dream, characters, backgrounds. So, so are you a novelist? So now you're trying to figure out how to write a screenplay about that. Have you written any screenplays? Tell us, Matthew. <laughs> What's your story? <laughs> and you have the perfect name for all this too. <laughs> is that really your last name? <laughs> or are you just, is that your Facebook name? Um, so, and I knew <laughs> Mickey, Mickey's, um, Profile picture was him as Uncle Fester. So <laughs> that was a clue right away. Um, uh, so also, you know, what are your talents? Where have you traveled? You know, really pulling from things that you know. When have you been a fish out of water yourself? Or when would you be a fish out of water? Like if, you know, what would be the weirdest place that's a real place where you could, if someone dropped you into it, where, what would be? And it can be something huge like another country, or it could be, a beauty pageant <laughs> you know it could be like something like what would be where you would be a total fish out of water that's what makes miss Conge congeniality work so well she's a total fish out of water um awesome 
glad to see that you are writing right. Yes, that's your real name, or yes, you've written screenplays. Um, if you're more specific. <laughs> specific. Um, can we do adaptations of books that haven't been made into films yet because you have no idea? So you can only do an adaptation of a book. I mean, I wouldn't recommend just picking up a book and doing an adaptation of it without any um, connection with the author. Um, if it's public domain, meaning it's a super, super old story like Snow White, you could do adaptations from that, but you have to do some research to make sure you can't. This gentleman actually took a chance um, by writing. He wrote this and then he contacted, well, he's, he's also done films already and he's won Oscars. So for him to do it, it's, it's a little bit different. So he wrote the screenplay and then contacted the author and then they, he got the permission, but he has this massive track record. It makes it a little bit easier for him. In general, I wouldn't recommend doing an adaptation of a book without permission from, or without um, optioning that book. You've been writing for about the past two years, seriously, but off and on since 1997. That's awesome. Um, that is you. So that's actually your name. That's a great name, um, but you also have a pen name. Awesome. Um, so this is Matthew we're talking about. So in case we use this for the podcast, um, that's cool that you have a pen name and that that's also, you, you have two cool names then. Um, so I'm glad that you're taking it seriously because clearly you are a creative. So, um, so some of the other things you can pull from were like, how did, how did you meet your spouse or how did you meet significant people in your life? Those meeting stories, people love those kind of stories. How did your parents meet? How did your grandparents meet? How did your great, great grandparents meet? What is your, you know, story of your family? Like, you know, what are some, are some of the more unusual or not even necessarily unusual, but everybody, everyone I've met has some kind of family story. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. So, Oh, nuts. <laughs> so, sorry to laugh at that. It's so cute. Oh, nuts. So, yeah, so, but there are many, you know, just keep going back, reading books that are public domain is one way to go. Um, so those are some of the, just some of the kind of basic ways that you can kind of come up with ideas. Um, so we have a little exercise and it's in your handout where write five things you personally know that might be used in one of your screenplays. So what is something that you know something about? And I mean, even if it's like, so I'm going to pick on Matthew a little bit, but he's been talking about all these dreams that he's having and all these ways that he's been um, capturing these dreams. Like even that in itself could be a story. He knows about that clearly. Like this is a, a real experience for him of having these dreams, writing them down, having these apparatuses to write them down, taking these dreams, creating them into stories. And there's been many movies that have to do with the whole dream thing and, um, you know, authors that are inspired and they write movies based on their dreams and that kind of stuff. And there's so many, but that doesn't mean you can't write another one because there's so many ways you can go with that kind of concept. It's super cool. Um, so um, how can you contact the author to get permission to do an adaptation of one of their books? Yeah. So Doug's saying you can contact the publisher. You can write to the publisher. Um, that would be a whole nother topic that we can do for sure. Um, there's a lot of different ways, you know, now with social media and stuff too. But I, and it also depends on how famous this person is, how famous, how, how much of a big seller this book is, because probably if the book is on any kind of New York Times list or Amazon list or something like that, people are already approaching them. Some people write a book and they already have a, a film deal to begin with. And, you know, we've had um, Kathy Van, Van Eek inside here, um, and she talks about getting a book deal. That's been one of her topics too, is like book deals and film deals and how it all goes together. That's a whole nother topic. So you can write to the, you know, you can just look inside the book, see who the publisher is, and you can find out, you know, you can kind of get to the publisher, write them a letter. It takes less a long time. You know, it's, it's easier if you know someone clearly, but you know, you can find out more information that way. But, um, but yeah, oh, there's Gruffles, <laughs> sorry. Um, so the other thing that we want you to write about are, she's very excited because she has not seen him. His son is home yet. Um, she hasn't seen him for a long time. Um, so what are, the, what are the most embarrassing moments of your life? That's always a good topic. <laughs> so you can write about embarrassing moments of your life and expand on those. So um, embarrassing moments are just, you know, so universal. Um, Yes, write a letter of his intent that shows that you're interested in making an adaptation. Um, honestly, Scruffles, Scruffles. She's excited. She's got to come tell me about it. Oh, and now there's people lurking behind me. <laughs> Go get him. It's very exciting. Pardon us. Pardon us while we have a family moment. Um, <laughs> she's like, not like Scruffles. She's, so she gets excited. So she, she's a pound dog. And so... Um, 
she was clearly abused, and so she gets whenever she gets excited, she runs to either me. Usually, it's me. She'll run to one of us and be like, "Is this okay? Can I go check this out?" So that's what she was doing. But there's plenty of people here that will love and protect her. She's good. Um, so, oh, if it's Stephen, yeah, if it's Stephen King, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Stephen King adapts, adapts his own books into screenplays. So, yeah, he's not he's not one that I would even attempt to be. I, I'm usually not the one that's like, <laughs> don't even try. But he, he makes his, he writes his own screenplays. So, you writing an adaptation, you are, there's so many other paths you could go down that will be more successful for you. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend writing down that path because, you know, there's just so many other opportunities. He's already got that funnel set up. He's already doing it. So, um, She's nine pounds. She's a big girl. We just went to the vet the other day. She's nine pounds. Um, so yeah, he, he, he adapts most of his own work from what I understand. Um, and other, you know, huge writers adapt him. So, um, but you can be inspired. You could be, you could write a screenplay about someone who really wants to adapt a book written by Stephen King. You know what I mean? There's other ways that you can go about. You can play, you can, you know, being John Malkovich is a great example. He was, he was an unknown writer when he wrote that. And he wrote this screenplay that so relied on John Malkovich. It was like, it, but it was a brilliant, brilliant screenplay. And it just went like wildfire through town. Like everybody who had read the screenplay was like, what the heck is this? But loved it. You know, it was so, so bold. Um, who is the guitar player? Yes, we have lots, of, I have lots of music in my life. It's very, very, um, both, yeah, lots of people in my life play guitar, and then I, I was a dancer for a long time, and you know, a lot of music in my life, a lot of people that write, that write and play music, husband, son, everyone. Um, so, um, so working on the kind of most embarrassing moments of your life, um, <laughs> okay, so I'll tell one real quick. Um, I was in high school, I was super modest, which is odd for a dancer, but really like modest, so like I was in the drill team, and, and we would go to competitions and we would have to change our clothes clothes on the bus. And so I created pillowcases that said the name of the school that we would shut in the window of the bus so that people couldn't see it. <laughs> so just that's a preface to the story. And then it got too hot. So everybody's opening the window anyway, but I just didn't like it that people could see it into the bus while we were changing our clothes. <laughs> so classic. Um, I am an expert at changing clothes under clothes because <laughs> dancers have to constantly change their clothes in public. And so I became a, well, I could, yeah, I could change what clothes are right. I'm not going to demonstrate, but I can. So I became an expert in that. So just that preface to the story. So I was with one of my dearest friends. We're still friends and we still laugh about this. Like I, I used to not be able to tell this story because I got too embarrassed. I can finally tell. We, we were at a picnic. I was wearing shorts and a little tank top. This is how modest I was. I had, I didn't want anyone to see my bra straps. So I had safety pinned my bra straps into the tank top so no one could see them. This is, this is very much who I was, am. <laughs> so, um, oh, awesome. Know how many guitars a guitar player needs? Just one more, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Cool. I don't play, <laughs> but I think they look nice. <laughs> Someday I'll learn. I can play a sitar, sort of. Um, anyway, so we we were having these water fights and whatever. And so we were, went to fill up these water balloons and we were in this park and we went through a rec center into this gated, it was like fenced in yard and we were filling up all, of, we didn't have, yeah, we were filling up all the water balloons. And then, okay. So then, and then we go to go back, I don't remember how it went. So then we went to go back into the room to get up back outside again and we were locked in the fenced outside yard. And so I say to my friend, no problem. It's a chain link fence. I'll just hop the fence and then I'll go around and get you out. I climb up the fence, no problem. <laughs> I get one leg over the top and it starts doing this. So I'm on the top of the fence. And then of course we start laughing, which is never good. I start laughing. And so I can't, I can't get my foot over because I'm laughing too hard in the fence, it's like swaying. And she is dying on the inside. And I might add, we're really good friends now, but at the time she was my teacher. So she's the authority in the situation. So I'm like, she's like eight years older than I am. So she's not, we're not that much different. And so I finally get my foot over. 
look, <laughs> there's my son. I finally get my foot over and I go to jump down and my shorts <laughs> caught on the top of the chain link fence and I jumped down, but my shorts stayed. <laughs> So I land, I'm dying in laughter. I look up and then she's like, she's just cut in my underwear with my shorts on the top of the fence. I still have not used this in a screenplay, but yeah, that's it's classic, right? So I had to climb back up the fence in my underwear and get my shorts out. Luckily, they had totally ripped, obviously. I had the safety pants because we needed to be modest. So I was able to safety pin my shorts back together. I let her out. We totally forgot. We came back. We've been gone for a really long time. Everybody was like, where were, were you? Where were you? And we were, of course, <laughs> crying, laughing. And I swore her to secrecy. <laughs> Right? So it should go into the screenplay. Classic moment. And especially since I was so shy about it all, which was what kind of made it like totally being upstaged. <laughs> now they're just making random crosses. <laughs> I know them so well. I just heard them laugh. I know them so well. Uh, so like this right now. <laughs> we have a new moment. So anyway, what is your moment? I'm sure you have one. Come on. I'm sure you do. So that was kind of a random moment. And then, of course, I swore to secrecy and she couldn't tell anybody. And then we had a banquet at the end of the year and she gave me like safety pins and a pair of shorts or something. And then, but didn't say why. <laughs> she gave it to me as a gag gift and everybody's like, what? <laughs> totally, right? It's cute, the extras. <laughs> okay, ready to cross? <laughs> so anyway, so that's my embarrassing story. So I just wanted to share so that you guys could feel funny about, not feel funny about sharing. <laughs> so glad you're not the only one with stories like that, right? So um, yeah, so in screen reader session, maybe we'll share some because <laughs> we're live with each other. So that's kind of, you know, those are some of the things, some of the ways that you can come up with things totally, <laughs> totally. Um, and now I've grown up and it's much easier for me. I have many, many, many stories. I'm actually am writing a play about my experiences at Knott's Berry Farm because um, I was a can-can dancer there for years. And so, um, <laughs> back, back to one reset, um, because we did the same show six times a day, you start, things happen because you're not thinking about the show anymore. So I have a m many, many stories from Knott's Berry Farm. It was just an crazy, crazy. Um, <laughs> you'll never know it's me, so I don't care if people know it's me. It's fine, but one of the things is um, people in my life get worried that I'm going to write about them because <laughs> I do. I use people in my life. That's a writer. You should use people in your life. Um, just, you know, be nice, sort of. You can change them in, you know, based on. So people in your life are your greatest source of inspiration. And like that story, stuff like that happens all the time in life. And you need to be able to process it and use it, <laughs> in my opinion. So cool. So does that make sense? So hopefully that makes sense. That kind of can get you started. Um, uh, Doug, do you have the link to the handout? Can you put it in the comments here? And then we will also um, share it via the Facebook group later. And we'll also, you'll get an email. Um, next, we, we usually, the email gets out like on Monday. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, I can see, I have a tendency to say the wrong thing at the wrong time, says Peggy. Really? <laughs> I would never guess that about you. And in high school, it tended to get you in trouble. Yeah, my my son has that problem. I don't know where he got it. So, um, so yes, definitely you should use some of those or use that character. I mean, that's kind of Juno in a way. She's that's one of her her charms. And I have a feeling Diablo Cody was that student in high school. Would not surprise me. Um, usually, writers, you know, funny take smarts. I have a friend who says that he's hilarious and he's like funny take smarts. And now he's a teacher, <laughs> so it's all coming back to him. So. So yeah, so we just wanted to try to give you some ideas to get you started. Um, so well, you're an inspiration as far as screenwriting ah, and screenwriting and all that. So who knows, you may end up in a story of mine one day. Oh no! <laughs> and you and Doug haven't forgotten about you. Yikes. So yeah, who knows? You know, there's been plenty of weird things that have happened here that you could use. Absolutely. So, you know, so yeah, put those opportunity years on. Um, you have British humor. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, this one time at band camp. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> totally, that's Peggy. <laughs> just so you know, not me. <laughs> that would be Peggy one time at band camp. Um, so <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still stuck on that. I have British humor. 
<laughs> so, which is a very different thing. And I just, I went to London not too long ago and went to many plays. There was only one where there was actually a Scottish play and where the characters were Scottish. And it, honestly, it took me the first good 45 minutes before I could understand a single word they were saying. And they talked so fast with, with a really thick, really thick. I'm sorry. So bad. Scottish accent. I want to say for a minute there that it was Irish, but I'm pretty sure it was Scottish. Um, so, <laughs> you too? <laughs> so, anywho, <laughs> we're getting tangent -y. You guys are getting tangent -y. It's not me. It's you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> it's contagious though, right? So, um, yeah, so hopefully that kind of can give you a little jumping off spot. Um, we went a little bit long today. I'd like to keep these like 20 minutes. We're a little bit tangent -y today. Um, so, uh, enjoy your week. We're going to take next week off for the holiday. Enjoy your holidays, and if there's not material there, that's that's your homework assignment. Find material in your holidays. It is everywhere. It is everywhere in holidays. Just, you know, bring up politics, religion, <laughs> how you differ. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So, enjoy your holidays. Um, enjoy your families. Enjoy everything, and, you know, find that time to write when you're, this is the best, one of the best, most creative times to write. And if there's, you know, sometimes holidays also bring out kind of angst and that kind of thing. It's best therapy ever. Just write about it, write about it, write about it. When in doubt, write. All right, so we will see you. Stupid Google, wait, I missed. Um, I do have a Irish Asian gang love story that I'm looking for partners to write on. Hey, put that in the Hollywood Gatekeepers group. You might be able to find someone that would write that with you. Sounds very interesting. No, I got you, stupid Google. <laughs> stupid Google. All right, you guys. Um, I hope we get lots of neat presents too. You guys are our present. You guys are such a gift and we're super, super, super happy to be here. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, all that, whatever you celebrate. We hope it's the most beautiful one ever and we will see you next year. Use your planner. <laughs> nagging, nagging, total CNO, Chief Nagging Officer. That's me. All right, we will see you in the new year. Thanks, you guys. Talk